As a lot of people coming over from Unity to Unreal think uh, about prefabs and Unreal's maybe lack of prefabs, and then they discover, hey, blueprints kind of function as prefabs. And to a certain extent, they do, right? Because if I open up this blueprint, it has like these bunch of components that it puts together to make one object that you can instantiate over and over again. And that, for all intents and purposes, sounds like a prefab. But there is one important difference, and that is that this blueprint itself actually is a class. It can have variables and code of its own entirely disconnected from its components, which is, from a programming standpoint, sometimes actually very much a good thing. But it also means that it's a little bit wasteful and a little bit unstructured in times to use this as just a method of prefabbing. Because you're effectively creating an entirely new class for every prefab that you're making, and if you're not using it to create variables and extra code on it, you might as well use this different option, which is level instances. So let's uh, just place a couple of vectors down. Uh, we have some like geometry here, so like a cube and a sphere and a cone. If we just collect all of these and we like put them down on the floor properly, this could be a blueprint, right? We could make a blueprint and put all these three in there and that instantiate this a million times across the level that we're making and then we're good to go. But actually, because this is just three objects that don't do anything else anyway, what we can do is we can right-click on them, and in level, we can create either a packed level actor or a level instance. Creating a packed level actor effectively, uh, let's just do this real quick, creates a blueprint class that just instances these uh, things, but still it creates this as a blueprint class, and that is the very thing that we're trying to avoid. But it can be nice because it effectively uh, is just a good way to like instance purely art-related things. I don't have any other behavior around a lot because it actually uses these instance static meshes instead. Because originally these were just normal static mesh components, these will perform slightly better. If we go back to level, we can also uh, break this uh, and break the level instance, and they will go back to their original state as three separate objects. The other option that we have, which is very similar, but doesn't create a new blueprint class, which in some cases is better, in some cases might be worse, is using it to create a level instance. Just like we saw before, we can actually set the uh, pivot point wherever we want, uh, the center minimum Z, which will take the center of these three things and just get the minimum Z value, effectively putting the pivot point on the center between them on the floor. The center is just the very center of the bounding box of these actors together. We can say add a specific actor, at which point you need to give in a name for that actor, or we can just do that world origin, if that is something that you want. But generally speaking, I like to use uh, center minimum Z. And when we do that, you will see that it creates just a new level. This is just a whole level now. We can even go into our content browser here and we'll see new map one, the thing that we just made. If we save every change that we made uh, here a moment ago, we can even open it up as a level itself, which it doesn't have lighting, so you can't see anything, but these things are there. So if I now change something about this in this level, save it, and go back to uh, wherever my third person map was, you'll be able to see that it also did change it here because it's just instancing that level. And I can copy over this level instance a bunch of times and it's just reflecting the state of that level itself over and over and over again. But it might be a little bit annoying if you have to open up a different map every time you want to change anything about this instant level every time you want to change something about this uh, level instance, right? That doesn't seem like a lot of fun. Well, luckily, you can also, uh, when you go down to level, you can edit an instance level like this, which will make everything uh, kind of like grayscale, except for the objects that you can move around. So let's put this one over here now, and let's put the sphere up there. And now when I exit, it very helpfully tells me that I didn't save yet. You should save, uh, but you can also just save when you exit, you will see that it immediately reflects on updates as well on every single instance of this, because again, we were editing the map itself, the level itself we were editing, and these things don't do anything except just instancing that level and putting it into this level. It's not dissimilar from level streaming in a lot of ways. Now, if I go back again and I can uh, break this, which 
will make this specific one that I have selected back into its original components and just put it into this third person level while keeping these ones perfectly intact. So you can also very much use it as a, okay, this is the default layout of these objects, but once I put them into the level, I want to break them apart and like tweak them a little bit. Of course, then they are again, separate objects, but I should point out that these still are separate objects now. So they're not going to be instanced in terms of rendering like a PAX level actor that we did before in this video would do. The upside to this way of doing things, though, is that we can uh, edit this thing, for instance, and we can say we want to, for all these three objects, I actually want to simulate physics. Let's save that, exit out, and now all of these objects are going to be simulating physics, but once the level itself starts, let's put this one down here, it's going to be simulating physics based on, like, where they physically are in the actual world, in this actual level. So they don't need to share their transform. They don't need to do anything weird like that. Once you actually interact with them in the world itself, they are entirely separate objects that you could even programmatically do stuff with. So let's start the game, and you can see that these all just behave in their own way. I can push these around, and it doesn't, like, weirdly push around the other ones. These are entirely separate actors now. So if I go into F8 mode, which is just like normal viewport mode, I can once again just individually select these actors because they are now individual actors. It's just the level instance spawns in everything inside of it into the parent level on begin play. So let's break this one apart again because I want to show you that that is distinctly different from creating that level actor, which actually I think we still have the packed actor level in here. There we go. If I instantiate this one a few times around and I start playing the game, when I go into F8 mode, this still will just be one combined actor. I can't individually select just the cone or just the sphere or just the cube. And if I go into this new map here, which I also could have done by just editing it, but whatever, and I set simulate physics to being true, and then I go back into the third person map, you will also note that that straight up doesn't work because these aren't individual actors that can simulate physics. These are just instances of a mesh. So once again, for instancing slightly more complex like art things that you have to place around a few times, things like, for instance, maybe you have a stack of bricks that has fallen off of a wall. I, I don't know. I'm just saying something. That really works quite well for this and that does actually improve your performance quite a bit the moment you need to interact with anything uh, on an individual basis but you still want to be able to have like a prefab of things to easily play in the level from a like level design perspective that is where level instances come in because packed level actors uh, don't quite cut it anymore at that point but those are the two options that you have in unreal engine aside from just throwing everything into a blueprint and uh, pretending like that's uh, the same as a prefab because it's not really. And I figured a quick PSA about all that might not be a bad idea. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 